Hey, Andrew here. Uh, let's do some more best millimeter today. Uh, we're going to take another look at that S&B 180 grain jacket at hollow point, but this time, instead of firing it from a traditional pistol, we're going to fire it from a knot carbine, uh, one of those pistol brace thingies with a 10 inch barrel, a TNW arrow survival pistol. We're going to shoot it into clear ballistics, clear gel. So let's get out into the range and take a look. All right, so the first thing that really strikes my attention here is, is that there's a big difference in penetration between these two. This top bullet went to 11.7 inches. The second, actually I believe this is the first shot, this lower bullet, uh, this went to 18.1 inches. Let's take a look at the projectiles and see how they fared. in there. <laughs> Still coming apart. Some extra chunks, bonus chunks. There we go. All right, well, there's your answer. That's why this one didn't go as deep. I don't know what happened to the rest of the core of this bullet. Oh, there's an exit right here. So that's probably what happened to the remainder of the lead portion of this bullet. Maybe it's worth firing a couple more rounds just to see how consistent this is. All right, so we fired a couple more rounds and we got much more consistent performance. Here, here, here. Penetration depths being 17.6, 16.8, and 20.1. Of course, we'll get some measurements and some proper photographs when I get home, but let's take a look at the bullets so you can get a bit of an idea of what they look like. Okay, well, this time it looks like I was able to keep most of them in the block. We got 15.3, 18.3, and 17.5. Let's take a look at these bullets here. All right, so despite the denim, they still expanded. It's no surprise, you remember the pistol test that we did with these same bullets. At lower velocity, they were still expanding through denim, so of course we would expect them to expand here. The only real question was what impact it had on penetration, and the answer is eh, not a lot. All right, so 
kind of sort of more of the same. The terminal performance, at least on paper, isn't that much changed. If you're looking at the numbers and you're trying to figure out how those heavy clothing bullets gained weight, well, they didn't gain weight. It's just that the number printed on a box, that 180 grains is a nominal weight and it's not uncommon for the actual weight of the bullet to be more or less than whatever the nominal weight is. In some cases, especially with budget types of ammo, the weight of the bullet may vary by a couple of grains above and below, and in other cases, the weight may be very consistent, it's just that the actual weight is, say, 181 grains when the nominal weight is 180 grains, or the other way around. It's not uncommon. In this case, we're seeing a starting weight that's above the nominal weight. As far as everything else, again, it did well. Um, it expanded reliably and penetrated adequately. And in my book, that means that it would be suitable for defense. Is it best? Is it good? Is it better than other? Well, not so much. It's far from ideal, but it is suitable. Uh, if you find a good deal on it, maybe not a bad idea to snatch up a couple hundred rounds. At least, at the very least, it's good brass. If you have any questions or if you think I got something wrong, definitely leave a comment below. I always like to hear your opinions on this stuff. If you'd like to find out how you can rent a phantom high-speed camera just like the one that I used for this test, get in touch with Aimed Research. Their contact information is in the description below. Have a great day.